environmental health, environmental health and safety guideline for mining performance uh, for the mining sector and talking about the performance indicators and monitoring. This is what we are going to be capturing in this particular module and I hope you find it interesting. I hope you find it interesting. My name is Comfort uh, Asokoro Gaji from Rich Flood LLC in Delaware, uh, Environmental and Social Safeguard Consultants. Please, you can email us info at richflood.com if you do wish, and you can follow our Twitter handle. Let's dig down to... So we have this overview that we are going to be covering today, and we're going to be covering it very fast because I want to have your comments, and then we can talk on your comments and move with some speed to see how we can capture all of the EHS guidelines because this is going to take two hours but we are segmenting it into 10, 10 minutes then we pause and take your comments. So the industry specific impacts and management we are going to cover and also uh, uh, under this you have the environmental health and safety, community health, occupational health, mine closure um, and uh, post closure. We will also look at the performance indicators and monitoring uh, for the environment and for occupational health and safety. So for industry specific impact and management, um, the, the focus is on uh, for environment, taking environment subtitle. We have water use and quality, water use and quality concerns. We have waste, we have hazardous materials, land use, biodiversity, air quality, energy use, and so on and so forth. For occupational health and safety, we're looking at general workplace health and safety, hazardous substances, use of, or use of explosives, because this is uh, the mining sector we are looking at, and uh, electrical safety and isolation, physical hazards, ionization, ionizing radiation, fitness for work, travel and remote site health, thermal stress, noise and vibration, you know, the list is a bit longer. So you have also specific hazards in underground mining, fires, exposures, confined spaces and uh, oxygen deficient atmosphere. These are the concerns that we have for the mining sector. And then you look at the community health and safety, community health and safety, you look at the tailings dam safety, you look at the water storage dams, you look at the land subsidence and the communicable diseases that are likely to emerge due to the project. And also emergency preparedness response, specific vector control and prevention strategies. So for my closure, we look uh, at the financial feasibility, physical integrity, chemical integrity, ecological habitat integrity, and of course the closure plans. The closure plans are very important. So performance indicators um, and monitoring, here we have the environment. Uh, this basically will deal with emissions and effluent guidelines and uh, environmental monitoring. Environmental monitoring, you check your tailings, you check your effluents, you check uh, a number of parameters in, in, in this process as indicators. So occupational health and safety performance, uh, has to do with occupational health and safety guidelines that has to be in place, the accident and uh, fatality rates, occupational health and uh, safety monitoring. These are considerations that add when it comes to uh, performance indicators and monitoring. So looking at uh, performance, uh, still on performance indicators and monitoring, I have this chart that you can see. It's talking about uh, emissions and uh, effluent guidelines. These are pollutants or let me say laboratory parameters that have to be monitored. These are laboratory parameters that have to be monitored. You have the SI units and the guideline value. The guideline value is, uh, we can call it the limit that it should not exceed. So for, to for total suspended solids, you have uh, 50 milligrams per liter that should not be exceeded. For COD, you have 150 milligrams per liter that should not be exceeded. For lead, I'm particularly interested in lead because of uh, some projects I have undertaken that uh, uh, had lead poisoning. So it shouldn't exceed 0.2 milligrams per liter. 
these are the uh, 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 emissions uh, guideline that can be looked at as, as indicated on the table uh, on my slide. So the table specifically will prevent, uh, I mean, present uh, effluent guideline values for the sector. The guideline values for process effluents in this sector are indicative of good international industry practice as reflected in relevant standards of different countries, you know, which recognize regulatory frameworks. These guidelines should be achievable under normal operating conditions, except there is an abnormality. It should be, it should be achievable under normal uh, operating conditions in appropriately designed and operated facilities through the application of pollution um, prevention and control techniques, which was discussed earlier in the EHS uh, 39, Model 39. This is Model 40, okay? So uh, these levels should be achieved without dilution at least 95% of the time that the plant or unit is operating to be calculated as a proportion of annual operating hours. Deviation from these levels in consideration of specific local project conditions should be justified in the environmental assessment. So combustion source uh, emissions guideline associated with steam and power generation activities, for instance, from sources with a capacity equal to lower than 50 megawatt uh, are addressed in the general EHS guideline that we discussed earlier, with larger power source emissions addressed in the EHS guideline for, for thermal power. If you recall, in the last module, we dealt with this uh, seriously. So for environmental monitoring, uh, programs uh, for this sector should be implemented to address all the activities that have been identified and to have potential uh, that, been, that have been identified that it will have a potential significant impact on the environment. During normal operations and uh, offset conditions, you know, this should be identified to have potential significant impact. So environmental monitoring activities should be based on um, direct or indirect indicators of emissions, effluents and uh, resource use applicable to the particular project and so on. In some mining projects actually, monitoring should extend for a minimum period of three years after closure or long after closure, more than three years if the site conditions warrant that this attention should be given. So monitoring frequency should be sufficient to provide uh, representative data for the parameters that is being monitored. Monitoring should be conducted by trained individuals following monitoring and rich flood uh, is working on this seriously to make sure that we train and retrain, train and retrain uh, individuals that can on, that should be undertaking the monitoring tasks and record keeping procedures and using properly calibrated and maintained equipment for the projects that we handle. Monitoring data should be analyzed and reviewed at regular intervals and compared with the operating standards. Important should be compared with the operating uh, uh, standards so that any necessary corrective actions can be taken. You know, additional uh, guidance on applicable sampling and analytical methods for emission and effluents uh, is provided in the link below and uh, will be posted to you so that you can, you can go through this for proper. Okay, so let's take a look again at the performance indicators. You can see uh, occupational health and safety performance should be evaluated. It should be evaluated against internationally published exposure guidelines, of which example, including the um, threshold limit value, occupational uh, exposure guidelines and biological exp uh, exposure indices uh, published by the American Conference of Government Industries Hygienists. You have also the pocket guideline to uh, chemical, uh, just a moment, Mm -hmm. You have the project's guideline, okay, 
You have the, the project, uh, the pocket guideline to chemical hazards also published uh, by the U.S. National Institute of Occupational Health. You have permissible exposure limits, PEL, uh, published uh, by uh, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration of the United States, OSHA. You have uh, also indicative uh, occupational exposure limit values published by the European Union member states or other similar sources that can be available. This table provides illumination guidelines for mining activities, you know, provides ionizing radiation exposure guidelines for mining workers as well. Okay, so accident and fatality rates, uh, uh, mostly projects should try to reduce the number of accidents among project workers, whether directly employed or subcontracted. It should be reduced to a rate uh, of zero, especially accidents that could result in lost work time, different levels of disability or even fatalities. You know, so facilities, uh, facility rates may be benchmarked against the performance of facilities in this sector in developed countries through consultation with published uh, sources, you know, that could be helpful. So looking at uh, occupational health and safety monitoring, the working environment should be monitored for occupational hazards relevant to the specific project. Monitoring should be designed and implemented by accredited professionals as part of an occupational health and safety monitoring program with recognition for post-closure and uh, long-term health concerns. So facilities should also maintain a record of occupational accidents and diseases and dangerous uh, occurrences and uh, accidents. So additional guidelines, uh, guidance on occupational health and safety monitoring program is provided in the general EHS guideline, the link that uh, we have added to this webinar. And I hope that you find this webinar very useful. Please post your comments as I can see the comments are coming in. We will treat the comments uh, in a few seconds. But before then, my name is uh, Comfort Asokoro Gaji. I work with Rich Flood LLC, Rich Flood LLC in Delaware. And uh, we, we hope that this is very useful for your operation. Thank you very much. So let me take your comments and your questions now.